Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to another episode of Phil Super. Today, we are continuing work on the Wide Body 3000 GT. Now, for those of you who are new to this project, what we are doing is we are taking my 1994 3000 GT and we are putting a wide body kit on it. For those of you who are new to the channel or just need a refresher, this is my 1994 3000 GT. It's my dream car, and I am making it my perfect car. We are using the old fenders from my old white 3000 GT that is completely broken down. We cut those out last episode, trimmed them, and fit them up. In this episode, we are going to get everything prepped and ready to weld on. And if everything actually goes perfectly, we might actually be able to weld them on today, which really just all depends on scheduling for my friend who's going to come down and weld them. In the meantime, we're going to try and prep this as best as we possibly can to make sure that when he actually shows up, all he has to do is just start welding and all the prep work will already be taken care of. So what exactly is that going to look like today? Well, I'll show you. But first, please subscribe to the channel so I can continue to make this content for you. I absolutely love doing this, but your subscriptions, likes, that all lets me know that I'm doing a good job. And if I'm not, also just let me know as well if you want to see something different. But nonetheless, this is the project we are working on today. Let's go ahead and get started. So last episode, we put the front bumper on in order to get the spacing for the distance that the kit needs to be from the ground to the bottom lowest point. Now we did this because this front bumper is lower than the stock front bumper, which I now have sitting over there. And we're going to eventually turn this front bumper to look different, make it a little more custom in the way that I want it to look. But for now, we needed to get it up so that way we had the spacing correct. Then after that, we cut these white fenders out and we started to mock them up starting with these side skirts by using the existing plastic tabs that were there, drilling into the existing side skirt and mounting this up so it was at the correct point. Then from there we took the front fender, mounted it up, took the rear fender, mounted it up and trimmed everything to fit perfectly and that's where we left off. We haven't done any cutting on this green car but what are we going to do today? Well we are once again going to start with the side skirts. Why? Because we want to get these solidly mounted up. As of right now they're only mounted up by those little plastic tabs on the side and I want to get something a bit stronger so what we are going to do is I made some brackets that we are going to use to go ahead and mount the bottom side of the side screwed up. So that way it's not just held on by the plastic tabs on the top, but actually has a bit of support underneath. Now it doesn't need to be super, super strong because it's obviously not going to have any structure to the car. It's just an aesthetic piece, but nonetheless, I don't want them flopping in and out, folding in and out. It's a problem that I have with the side screws on the Supra, and we're going to address that in a whole separate video when we do some fun stuff with the Supra, but it's something I don't want to have the same mistake done on this car. I'd like to learn and progress. I don't want to make the same mistakes multiple times over. I mean, if you look at the side screw from the Supra, it looks nice, but when you get up close, it really has a whole lot of flex, and I don't want to have that same issue. So in order to combat, I have made these. These are little brackets, and all they are doing is attaching the original side skirt mounts to the new side skirt mounts. Essentially, this top hole here is going to a mount where the original side skirt has a bolt underneath, and that is going to come down and extend out to mount to where the white side skirt would have the same mounting holes. Since we push this white side skirt down and out, it's literally just mimicking that and extending the bracket. If we come to the other side of the car, I've actually already done it, and it has made a huge improvement. So if I come up to the side here and I give it a little bump with my foot, it's not moving, not at all actually. Now the only thing that is moving is these top parts, which those aren't actually mounted in yet. They still need to have some tabs put in. I'm waiting for some to show up because some of the tabs were just broken off, but that'll be a simple fix, just mounting this top part to here. But as for the bottom, that is solidly on and I have no worries with that whatsoever. So we're gonna go ahead, come over to the other side, grab all the brackets and go ahead and mount this up so that way the bottom is securely in place and then all we're having to worry about is the plastic. Tab. So let's go ahead and get those bottom pieces on and then we can move on to the next step of getting this car actually permanently mounted up. So here we go. All right, so we got this on, and at this point, we are essentially done with the side skirt. For now, again, we're waiting on these tabs to come in. I need more plastic tabs so I can get this solidified up as flush as we can. We're going to have to do a little work after we get it as flush as possible just to get this completely blended in perfectly, but that's all gonna come at a later stage once everything is completely welded on. So we're not concerned about that, but as for now, the bottom is just not moving. So the only quote unquote weak points now are the top, but that'll all be fixed with the tabs. You guys know this at this point. So what do we do now? At this point, we're going to now start cutting and getting the fenders ready for welding. Also, there's some birds over there. 
birds at the windows trying to get in. Man, heck those guys. What we are going to do now is I'm going to go ahead and take a marker and mark along the top where the fenders are supposed to be on the front and the back on both sides. So that way I can make sure I know exactly where they are or at least should be. And then we're going to go ahead and pull off the fenders on the front and the back. And then we're going to mark out where we need to cut for the fenders in here. Because of course, as you guys know, with the wide body sensor pushing the wheel out, the fender is pushed further out and we don't want to accidentally rub on where the existing fender was. So we need to cut out an area on the inside there. This is the next point of the process and it never gets to a point where it's never not nerve wracking. It's incredibly scary to go ahead and cut up a car because you can't undo it. Because right now we can essentially stop and, and undo everything that we did. But I, I have this vision and I need to fall through on it. And this is exactly what we're going to do. We're going to cut it. We're going to make it as, as good as we possibly can. So we're going to go ahead and now mark everything up and then go ahead and cut the fenders and make them as smooth as we possibly can. So that way there's, there's as little jank as possible. So it's a big move, but it's the next thing that we need to do. So let's go ahead and cut some fenders. I see this life like a swinging vine Swing my heart across the line And my face is flashing signs Seek it out and ye shall find Old, but I'm not that old Young, but I'm not that bold And I don't think the world is sold I'm just doing what we're told we have finished our first round of cutting. The front fender was a piece of cake because there's no extra metal that we're gonna need to weld up behind that. We just need to make sure that is smooth and then paint it over so it has rest prevention on it. As for the back itself, this one is a little more complicated but really not too bad overall. So essentially all that it is, is we went ahead and cut out the outside and then we cut slats on the inside and then pounded them up to try to be as flush as possible. There was a slight mishap on my part where I cut too much off initially from the metal and so the slats had to be hammered back a little bit but it's all gonna be covered and not gonna make a difference. But it just could have been a little bit smoother on my part. Nonetheless, we're gonna weld over that and then use uh, fiberglass filler and just normal filler as well to go ahead and sand that down completely smooth. So there's not gonna be any issues with that. It'll be completely sealed up. That's really just a non-issue, but still could have done that a little better. Nonetheless, again, it's not gonna be an issue at all. So the next thing up on our list of things to do is to go ahead and grind off spots where the metal is going to connect to the car itself. So, so this purple tape here is where the fender is connecting to the car. The bottom end is where it's gonna connect more specifically. But what we're going to do is we're going to take about an inch of space and grind off the paint straight to the metal so that way it has a nice even mating surface to connect to. Then we're going to go ahead and do the same on the back and the same with the fenders themselves so that way they are perfectly ready to just go ahead and have someone come in and weld them on. So far today we've got the side skirt brackets mounted underneath. We've got the fenders trimmed out and now we have to go ahead and just get that grinded up and ready for the mating surface. So that's our last step that we have to do before we could actually start to weld everything on. So let's go ahead and get that knocked out now. Here we go. All right, so at this point, we got everything ground up to where we need to be. All the metal is exposed on the front and the back. We got our fenders completely trimmed out. Um, I threw some sealer on the side to help hold the side skirts in place for now. And that's just what the wheels are there. They're, they're helping it set in place. Then we're gonna go down and do permanent mounts. In regards to the trimming, that is completely done. And we're at the stage where we need to weld. Unfortunately, I still haven't gotten the time to schedule one to get these welded. So that is still in the future, but we are getting that scheduled and it will happen this video, that I guarantee. But what else can we do this video in the meantime? Well, something I started to do and then I realized I wasn't even using the camera was putting some roof racks up on the top of the car because I well first off I just think it's a really cool look and secondly I think it'd be a really cool idea to put a roof box up there or something that I could actually use this car for in a way that allows me to hold some more stuff I, I just think it looks really cool anyway and just to have a little extra added practicality it would be kind of nice for a car that's going to be uh, this extreme so that's the next thing that we're going to do right now we're going to go ahead and get the other roof rack on and then we'll have that completely mounted up and set while we kind of stall and figure out a time when we can get this welded Okay. 
Okay, ladies and gentlemen, we've got the roof rack on and something cool has come in the mail. It's the ECU. Oh, I the ECU has finally showed up and it is a simple plug and play ECU with one little adapter that allows this ECU to be flash. Now this ECU is a Jester Chrome ECU. If you're part of the 3000 GT community, you probably know exactly what this is. But for those of you who don't, what it is, is this is essentially the stock ECU converted to be able to be flash. So it's not some aftermarket mega squirt or Haltech ECU that you plug in and then immediately have to get a tune for. This will run your car as if it's just the stock ECU, but it has the ability to be flashed. So later on down the road, when I want to put more power into it, I could flash this ECU without having to spend money on a new one. But in the meantime, I can still run this and I will notice no difference between this one and the stock ECU that was in the car already, except for the difference that this one probably should actually make the car run. So we're going to go ahead and put this in. All we have to do with this red little wire here is put this in one of the pins. We're just going to wire it through the existing wiring plug harness that's already there. And then we will have this ability to flash the ECU, get this plug plugged in, reconnect the battery, and then the car is going to start. <sighs> I hope. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get this plugged in. Give this thing another crank, gosh darn it. All right, ladies and gents, here goes nothing. Oh, I hope the battery's not dead. That'd be really inconvenient. I'm not even surprised at this point. I'm just sad. This sucks, man. Well, heck me. Well, the car didn't start, but the guy's coming over to weld, so uh, let's just go ahead and get these fenders welded on, shall we? Then we'll officially have wide-bodied the car. It's gonna be good. <laughs> oh, man. All right, here we go. 